Okay. <clears throat> uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us. And, and Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for having given us this opportunity to offer the praise of our lips to you. And now, Lord, we ask that you open the eyes and ears and hearts of our understanding that we may receive more of you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Happy Easter to everybody. What does that really mean? That means happy Resurrection Day. Mm -hmm. Happy Born Again Day. That's Resurrection. Born Again. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, the title of today's message is, God has provided for you a staircase of his thoughts. A staircase of his thoughts. Dog, go away. <laughs> God hath provided for you a staircase for his thoughts. Oh, well, that's kind of strange, but see, a staircase is built rung upon rung upon rung, you see. And God's thoughts are, and re God's revelations are built revelation upon revelation upon revelation. Uh, John, take your hat off, would you please? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now, <clears throat> now, he's provided it for you. There's a stairway to heaven. Anybody want to go to heaven? There's a stairway. Really? <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. We're celebrating Resurrection Day. And then I'm celebrating the way that the Lord has given me to celebrate. He wants you to understand this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to read again. Oh, you could do that again. Yes, again. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, which are the first day. The first day, and these are the first words of the Bible. And this is what God has to say. And every time we read this, <clears throat> we get a little deeper, which means we're getting closer and closer to God. Okay? So let me just read this now to you. I'll read the black face is the Bible itself, and the parenthetical stuff is uh, the Holy Spirit and myself. So I'll read the black face first so you get an idea of the concept, the overall concept. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now you would think, the first, let's say you're going to read a book, what's really important is what's in the first chapter. What, what opens up, what the book opens up with, because that's, that's kind of the predicate upon which everything else is ba based, okay? So this, these first five verses are very, very important to you, okay? <clears throat> so we're teaching. This is not just to come in and, oh, everybody feel good, you're just around dancing, and smiling, there's gold falling out from heaven, and all this garbage stuff going on. This is the real deal. We're learning what God has to say to us that's in the Bible, the real deal, okay? All right, so now let's start now and read again. But now with uh, our, our thoughts involved, our interpretations. In the beginning, God, and God is thought. That's the basic foundation of everything. God is thought. I often wondered, I wondered for 25 years what God was, and God just gave it to me five years ago or so. God's thought. So you can't create anything without thinking about it first. It's not possible. You just can't. I mean, you got you first have to think about it, and then you formulate it, and then you can create it. Okay? It just doesn't appear out of nothing. You have to think about it. Who's the creator? God. He's the creator of the entire universe. God thought about these things, and then he created them. Okay? God's a creator. Thought. Wait a minute. Isn't that a coincidence? What do you have inside your head and your body right now? Well, you have, well, God is invisible. The Bible uh, says God's the invisible God. All right? So what do you have that's inside your head? You have something invisible. It's called your thoughts. Oh, is that a coincidence that you have thoughts inside your head and God has thought? No, that's how God created you. Okay? He created you to think, to have thoughts. 
Now, what he did is he created you to think, to have his thoughts. But some of you, and I'm saying now because we're all fallen angels, and that's a concept that's, that's been built up, so you can't just grasp that like that. But, uh, but God created us to have his thoughts. And some of us decided not to have his thoughts. And they had Lucifer's thoughts instead. And Lucifer became Satan because he twisted God's words. He changed God's words into his own words. And God did what to Lucifer, Satan, and all the angels that follow him. He kicked them out of heaven. A third of the angels, the Bible says in Revelations, were kicked out of heaven, exiled with Lucifer, Satan. In the beginning, God created, and I parenthetically have here, no, no thing, no, nothing can be created without the thinking, without thinking, first thinking about it. We have to understand that. So, your thoughts, everything that you have is, comes from God, right? Okay. Well, what do you think your thoughts are? They come from God, too. Except you listen to Lucifer, Satan. And then you change, you started to agree with, so this is, I'm, I'm talking now in, a, in an abstract way, you started to agree with Lucifer, Satan, and as soon as you started to agree with him instead of God, you got exiled from heaven. And that's where we are right now. Because we have thoughts, we have God's thoughts in our head, but they've been changed. They've been changed and altered. And now what's happening is when we get born again, we go back to starting to think about God's thoughts again, and God changes our thoughts back into his thoughts. But before that, we're, we're thinking like the God of this world. That's what the, the 2 Corinthians, I think it's 2, 4, 4 says. Satan is the God of this world. We're thinking Satan's thoughts. When I was an unsaved fellow, that's what I thought. I didn't think godly thoughts. I didn't know anything about God. I just thought about the worldly thoughts, Satan's thoughts. It was the, got the permission of will of God he is the God of this world. But nevertheless, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, there's something else that he created, too. And I'm not sure exactly when or where, but do you know that God created evil? Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Let's look at the first footnote here. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 6 says this, That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. And there is none else. This is God speaking now. Now Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7 says this. This is God talking. What's he say? I form the light and create darkness. Whoa. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. Now we're going to find out why he does all those things. Why he does all those things is to teach us. Okay, he needs something to teach us, all right? or he's created something to teach us. But who created the evil? God created the evil. Oh, so in other words, what I'm saying is, even though Lucifer was a good angel in heaven, and it was an innocent angel, created innocent, he started thinking the wrong way, his own thoughts, okay, and not God's thoughts, okay, and he uh, became evil. Now, God has a purpose in doing this. this uh, let me tell you, everything in the Bible, everything in the Bible is a God's purpose. Now, God had a purpose in creating evil. He had a purpose, or he wouldn't have done it. Right? All right. Now, so now let's look and see here. It says, and you, that's, uh, we now know that God created the evil, okay? He created heaven, the earth, and the evil. And the earth was without form, uh, which means in Hebrew, a waste, a worthless thing, vain, confusion. And only uh, chairs don't get vain and confusion. Uh, uh, the, the suit of armor doesn't get vain. This flag doesn't get vain and confusion. Only people get vain and confusion, right? Only thinking minds get vain and, and confusion. Well, that's a kind of a threat here because that's what, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, okay, it says here, and the earth was without form, that's a waste, a worthless thing, worthless to God, vain confusion, it was worthless thoughts because God has thought. 
It was worthless thoughts. And then it says this as well, and the earth was out form and void, and void means an empty thing, an undistinguishable rune. And, and if, if ruined, if something is ruined, it must have been something else before it was ruined. It must have been unruined. You have to have something, let's say normal, uh, to, to ruin it, okay? So there must have been something else going on at one time. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And darkness, and here it is. Here God lays it out. What is darkness? I don't, any, do any of these things, are they attributable to your thoughts and to you? Well, let's see. And darkness, that in the Hebrew it means dark, it means figuratively misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness. See, we're talking about thinking creations, thoughts, thoughts. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. I have here a commentary, evil, unholy thoughts. Thoughts that have, those are all thoughts that have taken God's words and twisted them and changed them into, into their own thoughts and words. Evil, unholy thoughts. Now, so what we're saying here is God took all those critters, because God created the heavens and the earth and the angels with them, and the angels were all created good. Every single one of them. And so that's why Lucifer, uh, his name means in Hebrew, uh, uh, something of the light, uh, a man, something of the light. It's it's a good. Lucifer became Satan, which is evil. When he changed, okay. Now you only find Lucifer incidentally, just so you might not want to know, in the King James Version Bible. The name Lucifer does not appear in any other Bible. I mean, the commonly used Bible. King James Version. Another reason why I use only the King James Version, because it's explanatory. Okay, so now what we have here, uh, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness, ignorance, uh, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, uh, evil, unholy thoughts. Footnote number two, commentary about the darkness. Evil, unholy thoughts, I have parenthetically now, co consequential, Perversions of God's good holy thoughts. Perversions means when you take something, you change it into a negative kind of a thing, a perversion, okay? This verse describes a surging mass of fallen angels who are spirits. That is, uh, fallen, angels, uh, fallen thoughts no longer of God, because the angels are God's thoughts. And this verse describes a surging mass. Surging means a lot, moving. That's what spirits do, they move. A, this verse describes a surging mass of fallen angels who are spirits that are perverted. That means they're changed, therefore corrupted, perverted thoughts of God, perversions of God's original pure holy thoughts. That's what it's describing. You can, you can imagine the darkness there, a surging mass of fallen angels, evil thoughts, okay? Evil thoughts that are in agreement with and serving under the mingled chief fallen angel spirit identified as Lucifer Satan and the parallel would be good evil light darkness Lucifer good Lucifer light Satan evil Satan darkness but what it is Lucifer Satan is who it really is it's not just Satan it's Lucifer Satan he was a good angel can't take it away from him. he was a good angel he's Lucifer Satan uh, so I'm establishing something here with you because are any of those characteristics that are evil uh, that we, we talked about, do they relate to you in any way? Uh, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness? Of course they do. Because we're the ones who are cast to the earth. We're the fallen angels. Oh, see now that's something that's that I've been, I've been building upon for four or five years now. But you can't just walk in here and listen to me for the first time and hear me say that without thinking, this guy's crazy, crazy and alone. He's, he's out of his mind. But that's what it came up to be as I continue to ascend up the ladder, step by step by step. 
And so we have here a, a case of anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is attributing uh, human characteristics to something that is not human. Like saying, this, this, this chair is alive. Well, it's not alive, okay? But uh, anthropomorphism is, is, is ascribing to something that's inanimate human characteristics, and that's what's happening here. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the deep was an abyss, a surging mass of water, a surging mass of fallen angels, that is, fallen thoughts, because we're dealing with thoughts. And the Spirit of God, that's the holy thoughts of God, the Spirit of God's the holy thoughts of God, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Is the air conditioner on, Tim? Yeah. Pump it a little bit. Are you, do you feel it? Oh, I'm, I'm a little warm. Well, that's kind of not feeling good. <laughs> I should be warm. I should be hot for the Lord, shouldn't I? Yes, okay. All right, no, never mind then, okay. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And that means illumination, including happiness. That's footnote number three, because we know who the light is, don't we? Footnote number three is John 8, 12. It says this, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light. That's it. I am the light of the world. And that means universe there. He that follows me, that is in the Greek, means to be in the same way with me, shall not walk in darkness. There we go. We shall not walk in misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness, but shall have the light, the illumination, including happiness, radiance of life. That's what Jesus said. And what did, so, so what did we see what happened here? There was darkness upon the face of the earth, and God said, let there be light. And where did the light come from? It came from out of the darkness. And who is the light? Jesus Christ. He was born out of Mary, wasn't he? And Mary's main name in the Hebrew means rebellious. It means bitterness. That's what her name means. She's a type and symbol. She's the best of all you, all have you in, in that sense of the word. Mary was chosen because she was the best, the goodest, closest to being good woman in the known universe at that time. But she still wasn't saved. But God chose her to represent all humanity because that's what her name is. It, rebellious, bitterness, that's us, humanity. And out of that rebellious, bitterness woman came Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the light of the universe. Isn't that something? Okay. And God saw the light and the human illumination, including happiness, that it was good, versus evil. Now, there's an interesting thing about this. You can't really have good without having evil, can you? How can you have good if you don't have evil? If God had never created evil, there wouldn't have been any good. Would there? Because the distinction is there. Uh, if, uh, uh, God created evil because God is good. The Bible says God is good. And God said, let there be light, and there was light which was drawn out from the darkness, a kind of rebirth, a kind of born again from darkness into light, typified by being uh, from Mary uh, into Jesus. Mary's name in Hebrew is rebellious, that's bitterness, and to Jesus, his name in the Hebrew is Jehovah saved. That's the fourth footnote there. And the fourth footnote says, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation. <clears throat> ye are a chosen generation. That means, chosen means God selected you. You've been selected by God. There's all kinds of people around you, thousands of people on all sides, all surround us, who have not been chosen by God. Now you think about that for a while. And you, oh yeah, well I live underneath a tree though, and I have a hard time to come to the mission to eat and so on and so on. Yes, but you're here. Chosen by God. There's a reason for that. 
But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That is, in the Greek, that means peculiar means an acquisition, purchased possession. How is it we're purchased possession? Because Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. And we have been purchased. We are not our own anymore. He owns us. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. We're to serve Jesus Christ for all eternity. Everyone here who is a saved, born again person has been chosen to serve Jesus Christ for all eternity. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him. Put, show forth means publish, celebrate, just like I'm doing today. The praises of him who hath called you, what did it say there? What hath he called you? Out of darkness. This is in the New Testament now, 1 Peter chapter 9, 2 verse 9. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, so you used to be 100% in misery, destruction, death. Death is knowing you would have died. Well, anyway. In, in, in misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. But you've been chosen to be in love with Jesus Christ. Now, I have here, will you respond to that call and step forth? or stay in the womb of darkness. Because those of you who are not saved and born again are walking in darkness. You don't know anything, and you're not going to know anything until you get lit up. How do you get lit up? You ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and light you up. Enlighten you is the word, and he will do that. He will illuminate you, just as he did me. Okay, so... Uh, 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 let me just uh, conclude with this then. Uh, there was, uh, let there, uh, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good versus evil. God saw the light that was good, and God divided, that is separated as in birthing. That's what happened to, to Jesus. He, he was separated from Mary, wasn't he, when he was born. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, that is to be hot a day as, it, as the warm hours, that is good. And the darkness he called night. And properly night means a twist away of the light. A twist away of the light. It means adversity. It means to fold back a spiral step, a winding stair. And we're going to talk about the stair in a moment, okay? It means bad, evil things. And the evening in the morning were the first day. I wanted to go over that again with you because, <laughs> how will I say, when, you, when, you're t uh, when, you, when you're in class, and you are in class right now, the teacher just doesn't tell you one thing and then go on and expect you to have memorized what the, what the teacher just said, and you've got it all fixed in your mind, and it goes on to something else, and something else, something else, never, there's review. Okay? And what we have done, we're reviewing uh, those first five verses of the Bible, okay, more intensely every time. And they're to have meaning for you. Now, the second or third time you hear them, they start to make a little sense. But now we're going to talk about God's staircase of thought reaches into the glory of heaven. Oh, wait a minute now. Well, what I'm saying is that God has created a staircase to heaven. And in the staircase, there are rungs right here, right? Rung here, rung here, rung here. Each rung a little higher than the last rung. Well, that's interesting. So let's read this thing now. Now this is Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 and 11. It's giving you a little background of it, all right? And Jacob, now Jacob was at this point, Jacob became Israel in, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 28, excuse me, Genesis chapter 32, 28. But we're in Genesis chapter 28. We're four, four chapters earlier, okay? And Jacob didn't become Israel. That means he got saved, okay? Until four chapters later. 
So what does this mean? This just means where he repented, where he started to think about it, okay? And Jacob, who is not yet imputed for righteousness, that is not saved until Genesis 32, 28. Let's read Genesis 32, 28. Let's go jump up four, uh, four chapters and read this thing now. And he, that's the footnote number one, and he, that's the angel, said, what happened is Jacob, uh, it was nighttime, and Jacob was wrestling, and the Bible says that, uh, wrestling with the angel. Now, that's an interesting thought, because if you deal with it strictly on the physical level, it doesn't make any sense at all. And it's not on a physical level. It's on a spiritual level. Okay. It says here, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 32, 28, and he, that's the angel, said to, uh, this to Jacob, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. And Jacob means in the Hebrew, heel catcher, supplanter, a trickster, not a nice guy. Shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Israel means he will rule as God. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. So what happened is one evening, Jacob was wrestling with an angel. Now, what are angels? Angels are God's thoughts. Oh, you got that. Angels are God's thoughts. So, when Jacob was wrestling with an have you ever wrestled at in, in, in night with, with some thoughts your own, even nightmares? Okay, see? So the wrestling is, is, is a word that indicates a very difficult, a, a very difficult situation. Uh, much emphasis, okay? Uh, uh, and, uh, and the result of that wrestling was that Jacob prevailed. He won his case. Now, I'm going to show you his case was prayer, but he, he won, okay? Now, uh, um, and the result was that he became no more Jacob but Israel. He was got saved, born again. Let's look at footnote A. And what also says in Genesis 32, 28, thou hast power with God. Power with God. Anybody here would like to have power with God? Oh, yes. But it's not the kind of power that you think. It's, it's how will I say, thought power. Prayer. For us, it's prayer. Now let's read this. Some footnote here in Hosea, which explains it a little bit. Hosea chapter 12, verses 3 through 5. And he that Jacob took his brother, then that would be Esau, by the heel in the womb, he supplanted him, he tricked him, and by his strength, in, in the sense of effort, or successful effort, he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplica supplication. Now, what is supplication? In, in the Hebrew, it means to implore, move to favor by petition, beseech. It means he prayed. He prayed. In, the, uh, in 32, he says he wrestled, but Jacob prayed vigorously in humility, not demanding in humility, okay? And he had power with God. And it says again now, well, this is pretty neat. This really struck me. He wept. When you weep, you're not coming to someone saying, ah, me, I'm just, no, it's the opposite. You're in humility. Please, please, prayer, prayer, prayer. He had power with God because he persisted and he kept on all night, was wrestling with that angel. Uh, it means to implore, to move, move by, to favor by petition, by petition, over and over and over. Okay, beseech, he wrestled, uh, okay, unto him. And, and who was he wrestling with? He was wrestling with the angel that was the Lord God. He was wrestling with God, and he, now what the Bible says this, and he, that's Jacob, found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us, even the Lord God uh, of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Now let me put that together for you. That's really important. It says here, come on, sit down. He found him. Who's he? That's Jacob. Found who? He found God. Where? In Bethel. In, in, in Hebrew that means house of God. 
That's like a church. He found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. Whoa. What's God saying? And there Jacob spake with us. He didn't say me. Us. That's Elohim in the, in the Hebrew. That's God's plural. That's the Trinity. And there he spake with us. You can speak with God through prayer. And there he spake with us. Who? Even the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorial. Now I know that's kind of, you got to kind of piece that one together and think about that. But what's he saying there? He found him in Bethel. And we're going to find out, well, we're just going to read this next thing earlier that it's, it's a place called Bethel where he had this ladder. Okay. He found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. The Trinity, God. Through the angel, of course. Even the Lord God, Elohim, God's the Trinity. Now I'm just going to leave you with that thought. That was just struck me. I mean, because Jacob, the story of that uh, is uh, interesting. That Jacob wrestled and wrestled with this angel, and uh, uh, he was changed. Ch Jacob was trained, changed. He, the uh, uh, the angel touched him on his thigh, which is the strongest muscle, and he, Jacob limped from then on. You see, Jacob was a proud man. And after he talked with God, and he found us in Bethel, Jacob limped. Not so proud anymore. Not so proud anymore. And there, thereby, he had power with God. Power with God. So we read this then here, uh, Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 11. And Jacob, who was not yet saved, went out from Sheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon, as he arrived at, a certain place. And in the Hebrew, that means a condition of body or mind. A condition of body or mind. That's where your thoughts are. And tarried there all night. He stayed there all night. He was traveling. And he's out in the wilderness and, uh, 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 toward Haran. And he tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now, I'm telling you, that's got talk about significance. That's some real symbolism there. I can't. It's beyond me. I mean, I could go through extensively just that, that those verses there and he lighted he lighted upon didn't his, uh, which means arrived at a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep wow that's heavy so i'm just going to go on what happened next and here it is and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and, thy, and the God of Isaac. And he, I went out, we'll stop right there and go back. Wow. So Abraham was traveling by himself in the wilderness, and he stopped at a place for the night, and he dreamed. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, right here. Set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. This is Jacob's ladder. Ooh. You know what? 
God sent a letter out for a ladder out for you too. Yes, he did. Each of you has access to a ladder leading to heaven. Every person here has access. Whether you do it or not is up to you. Whether you start climbing is up to you. But every person here has access to heaven. Now, let's read a little bit of what happened here. And he dreamed. Let's look at the first footnote. Job chapter 33, verses 14 through 18. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceives it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and seals their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Well, just, I wanted to point out something to you. Every person here dreams. Now, if you've not ever been saved or born again, you're not getting any godly dreams. That's it. You have to be saved and born again to get godly dreams. But if you're saved and born again, you're getting dreams. Oh, but you come from two places because God is a spirit. Well, Lucifer, Satan, he's a spirit too. So if God can get into your dreams, so can Lucifer, Satan. So you have to be able to discern who's who talking, who's who, what has happened here. I've had, when I first got saved, in the first few months I had a lot of dreams, godly dreams. I could tell there were godly dreams, okay, of things and things to happen, so or so on. But I also had ungodly dreams. What's a, how do you tell a godly dream from an ungodly dream? Well, if during the course of that dream, you defiled yourself in any way from God's word, you defiled, in other words, you sinned in any way, not from God. Not, God's not going to give you dreams that, and that you sin at. So if you sin, if you do something bad that's sinful during the course of that dream, that dream didn't come from God. So where else did it come from then? Well, it came from Satan. Just telling you, you need to think about this in your dreams, okay? Now, so let me just, oh, oh I wanted to sit here, this last verse is he, in, in Job uh, 33, 18. He keepeth back, God restrains his, that's man's soul from the pit of hell, that is of damnation, and his life from perishing by the sword. The sword is the Holy Spirit of God. Now let me just look at that uh, footnote A, sub, sub note right underneath that. Ephesians chapter 6, 17, 18, where it talks about dying the whole armor of God, and it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Now wait a minute. If the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, that's what it says here, that's angels. Angels are the Word of God. You know what the Spirit is? It's the Spirit of God. That's an angel. Remember I showed you before what you are a part of? Let me do it again. This goes to uh, Legion. We are Legion had, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, this is the demonic who was all crazy, running around doing crazy things and bad things and uh, cutting himself and, and scaring people and doing all kinds of things. And, and Jesus said to him, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. No kidding, many. Okay, another verse has it. Devils, many de devils. All right. We are many. But it was a spirit. The spirit called Legion. Okay, because it identifies the spirit. So what? So we have here a spirit called Legion. He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And that means that he had many <coughs> spirits inside him. And actually, Legion means, uh, it re refers to a Roman Legion of 6,000 men. 
what the spirit was called. My name is Legion, he said, for we are many. For we are many. So he was the boss, and these were all his minor spirits working for him. But they all were influential in the same same thought patterns. Okay, they didn't think exactly the same. But one said, "Well, you should you should do this because this that's what's so wrong." Another one said, "Well, you should do this because this what well, is something different." But they were they were like like uh, uh, six thousand opinions about stealing a, a pen, just for example, stealing a dollar. 6,000, but they all were related, okay? So it's all these spirits working the same way were very powerful. So look at what this demoniac, he was naked, running around, tear, no clothes on, tearing uh, 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 chains apart, very, very powerful because of all the multitude of spirits. <laughs> I got caught up in the, oh, let me tell you what Satan is. You see this legion over here? Yeah. Over here. A spirit of lying. Over here, there's another spirit containing many smaller spirits inside him of lying. This is the one of stealing. This is all influencing, they're all, uh, uh, these are a bunch of spirits, all oriented toward the same thing, okay? So we have, like, I'm showing just three different categories of spirits right now, okay? But, you know, it's all ascending up to who? Lucifer, Satan. So what that means is this. <laughs> I'm having a problem with my right arm, so. Lucifer. All these spirits here, legion. Lying, stealing, so on, so on, all come under Lucifer, Satan. See? That's how it works. Now, here's the converse of that. Show us. All good spirits. I can't show you here. Come under God. Okay, what are the good spirits? Good spirits are, are in the Bible here. Uh, 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 help, happiness, uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, helps, um, anyway. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a good spirits for you. Uh, it's the whole Bible is full of good spirits okay, and bad spirits. In fact, in, in the Old Testament, it talks about uh, lying spirits, L-Y-I-N-G, spirits. Actually, literally says that as a type of spirit. There were lying spirits in heaven that uh, did, got employed to do something. God employed to do something. God's in charge. But there's all these, uh, oh, do it like this. All these evil spirits come under the heading of Lucifer Satan, who's the, the God of this world, the Bible says. All the good spirits come under the heading of Jesus Christ who is our Lord and Master. Who are you going to serve in heaven? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who's your Lord and Master? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Who are these evil spirits all going to serve? Satan. Their Lord and Master, Satan. Oh, yeah. That's spirits. You know what you are? We were all once part of God's Holy Spirit. God created all the angels innocent. So all the, and that's his spirit. Spirit is his thoughts, okay? And so that's the Holy Spirit. 
But what happened is, some of the members of the Holy Spirit, angels, or all angels, decided they were going to do it their way and started to follow loose for Satan. And what God did is he ejected them from the Holy Spirit. He took away their holiness. And he sent them to, back to the earth as fallen angels. But you were all once a part of God's Holy Spirit. Every single one of us here. And some of us are going to be restored back to that same circumstance. We're going back to becoming part of the Holy Spirit. That's what it talks about. A many-membered body in the, in the, in the uh, epistles it talks about. We're all, all one single body, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is actually God's Spirit. Yeah. We're all going back to being that Spirit. Some of us who are saved and born again. All of us who are not saved and born again are not going back. Okay? Because you're going to remain under Lucifer Satan. And he's going down the tubes. Every person here was one time a member of God's Holy Spirit. God created the earth and the heavens, and he created the angels with them, all innocent. Every one of us was innocent at one time. But we listened to the wrong guy. And we started to agree with him. That was a big deal. Started to agree with them. That's it. You're out. You're not anymore listening to God. You're listening to Lucifer, Satan. That's what I was. And I was a, a born into sin. I was uh, 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 actually a wild man from God's point of view. Uh, I did whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it. Same as you. Then I got born again. Up, oh, and now I'm being restored. Back. That's what uh, uh, Ecclesiastes sees. Uh, what is it? Twelve seven says that, that when we die, the, the, uh, the soul is going to return to the dust from whence it came, and the spirit is going to go, is going to return to heaven. Not go to heaven, it's going to return. The spirit, that your thoughts, that are godly thoughts, are going to return to heaven. You're going to be reinstated back into the Holy Spirit, the single body, God's thoughts. Single, no longer, no longer individualized, but single. That's what the, um, I shall have to preach on that to tell you. That. Let me get, 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 grasp some of that. I'm just. It's all waiting for you. Okay, and let me just go through this, just do this. And he dreamed, it's, uh, uh, Jacob at, at this point in time dreamed, uh, and behold, a ladder, uh, which is in the Hebrew means a staircase. Oh, that's what I drew, a staircase, okay? A staircase set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God, let's look at our, well, look, look, let's look at footnote number two about the ladder. Okay, commentary. Man, I wish I was starting over again. I could get into this, explain this, this uh, how we fit into the, the Holy Spirit. Let's do it. But we don't have any holiness anymore because we lost it. <laughs> We're getting it back. Footnote number two about the ladder. Uh, in the Hebrew, it means a staircase. Commentary. Please note that the rungs of the ladder, that's these here are rungs of the ladder, that connote ascending steps or scholastic grades provided by God for the advancement of our education for our understanding. That's it. Understanding is the principal thing. Understanding. Please note the rungs of the ladder connote ascending steps. Listen, okay, or scholastic grades. Scholastic grades, what? Here's first grade, here's second grade, here's third grade, here's fourth grade, all the way up. What happens when you pass first grade? Well, you get promoted, don't you? You get to second grade. You have more information now. You learn more stuff. You have more understanding. You get to go to second grade. What happens when you pass second grade? 
oh, you have more understanding now, so then you go to third grade. And what happens when you, and so it goes right on off the rungs. That's a ladder to heaven. That's what that ladder is, okay? That ladder is, uh, the rungs are, they connote ascending steps, ascending steps. Uh, and here's what they are, rhema upon rhema. Rhema means revelation. It's, that's how you get, that's how you, you get uh, promoted. You get revelation here. Oh, I see that. And now you get another revelation here. What's, it, what's that revelation built upon? Ah, the previous revelation. And now you get another revelation here. But what that revelation built upon? This revelation and this revelation. And then you get, it's like going up to the attic of a house. <coughs> step by step by step by step to the attic. When you get saved and born again, you don't start off in the attic of understanding. You start off right at the bottom floor. You're a babe in Christ. That's the first rung. That's kindergarten. Then you go to first grade and so you start ascending up the ladder. That's a stairway to heaven. Step by step by step. It's school. <laughs> it's your education. God wants you to understand. That's what education is all about. He wants you to understand. And the more you understand, the more he can use you in heaven. Because you are servants. I am a servant of God. I am to be used. I am an instrument of God. Amen. He uses me. And he will use you higher and higher and higher. Now, Jesus said this. Remember this, what Jesus said when he was talking to his disciples? I will no longer call you. He was talking to some disciples who began to understand. He said, I will no longer call you servants, but I will call you friends. Remember that? He said, friends. And he said, what's the difference is? Well, here's the difference. Jesus said this. He said, because the servant obeys and does what he's told to do, and that's it. And then he waits for the next order. But the friend, this is the servant. Here. But the friend, But the friend understands. He knows why. And when you know why, he's able to work on his own. I mean, he's, how will I say? <laughs> now, I, want, I don't care what I am in heaven. I mean, in terms of a servant or friend, I want to serve with my prayers at night. I, I'm going to serve Jesus Christ for all, all eternity, okay? I will serve him in whatever capacity he puts me in. He may put me in his capacity as a servant. He just says, Lionel, do this, and I will do that. And then I wait for the next order. And Lionel, do this, Lionel, do that, and I'll wait next order. Or he may put me in as a friend and say, Lionel, I have this uh, 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 problem over here on this uh, uh, particular town, city. You take care of it for me. Or, Lionel, I have this problem over here, and you take care of it, because then I'll have understanding, you see. But if I don't have understanding, I'll still serve, but at a lower, much lower level. Does that make sense to you? It's like, what are you going to do? Let's say, let's say you take, the, uh, take a school system, grades kindergarten up through high school, and they all go to heaven, just for example, and they're all saying the morning again, Hy uh, hypothetical now, okay? Which ones do you think God's going to use the most? The kindergartners? Who go, well, let's play. Let's, uh, let's go out and mow lawns. Let's, yeah, yeah. Or is he going to use those in, in uh, 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 freshmen and sophomores, seniors in high school? Is he going to use those more? Give them more responsibility. Because it's all about responsibility, you know. I mean, that's what the deal's all about. It's about how, uh, 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 God is, wants to give you authority. He wants to give you his authority. But you can't have his authority unless you understand his authority. And if you don't understand his authority, then he wants you to obey. He wants you to obey in any case. That's, that's, that's prerequisite. But if you don't understand, you're going to remain here in the first, second, third, and fourth grade, and he'll give you a, a, a sort of a, a, an equal kind of a, a, a responsibility in heaven. 
But if you do understand, you'll become a friend rather than, uh, 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 the Bible says, uh, I think Moses was a friend of God, as I recall. There's, uh, there's two of them, but I think as well, I'm not sure. But that's understanding. How do you get, now, so what's that all predicated about? What's that all based on? How do you get understanding? It's a revelation. This is the word. This is the raven word. This is the seed, the nut. These are all seeds. Now the seed has a covering. Inside the seed is the heart of the seed, right? Mm -hmm. That's the rhema. That's the actual meaning of what God has. That's like an angel. You see an angel, he's all, he comes to you in man's clothing. That's the covering. What's he got inside him? He's got the message inside him. That's the rhema. So when you see an angel in the Old Testament, all they were seeing was the logos. I mean, I'm making an analogy, okay? All they were seeing was the, what God had clothed them with, okay? Clothed his word with. It was all his word. He, he, and he, he clothed his word in and to look like a, a person so it wouldn't scare the idiots like you and me. I'm not idiots, of course, but, but, <laughs> but it wouldn't scare us. Hey, I'm telling you something. All of a sudden, I'm walking along and, and Pablo, there, there appears a... Uh, uh, Oh, I hear the word, a disembodied voice someplace echoing down. But they, they got, they had their, uh, the word of God appeared to the Old Testament people in many cases as angels. That's the seed. That's the logos. Because inside, angel means messenger. Inside him is God's message. It's the word inside him. That's the seed. This is all sounds very complicated, doesn't it? It's not complicated. It's just what happens is this. You just have to go up the ladder. Now, you can stop it at any time. You can hang out right here, for example. A lot of people do that. They, they go to different churches trying to find the right church, and they, then they wind up at one that they like, and they hang out at it for a long time. And then maybe they'll go on to another one after a while, or maybe not. So that you can hang out there, you can hang out there, hang out there, or you can keep on going up, keep on ascending. What's an ascension? A revelation. Every revelation. Revelation built upon revelation, built upon revelation. Another revelation here, another revelation here, another revelation here. It's rung upon rung upon rung upon rung upon rung. And where are you going? Closer and closer to God every single time. To get home. The more you understand. The more you understand. So I'm coming at you with these complicated thoughts here, okay? And I'm kind of like throwing them at you. You're not going to get these things just like that. It's going to take time to percolate in your mind, okay? And to some of them, you'll get some understanding of it. And maybe the next, that's like doing uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Again, uh, every time we do it, we get a little deeper. Because we have cogitated thought about it and we got more things to think about. Let me see what else I got here. Let's go to the, uh, the, the angels of God that said, that said here, uh, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and, and top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. Ascending means messages from us because we're here, and God's up there. Messages from us that we're sending up to God. What kind of messages are we sending up to God? Godly thoughts is what we're sending up. Godly thoughts. Can't send up evil thoughts to God. And what kind of messages is God sending back down to us? The descending angels are containing God's thoughts. So we're receiving God's thoughts down, and we're sending godly thoughts back up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, and we're ascending each time. We're going higher and higher and higher. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending, that is, messages from us, that's the prayers of our thoughts, and descending, messages from God, that is, his thoughts, his revelations on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. Well, I pretty much 
worn myself out on this. No more. I think I just, uh, I just, I want to finish there. Uh, and the point I'm making to you is that you are actually in school. I am a teacher. Yes. I am teaching. I am a servant of God. God is teaching. He used me as an instrument. He's teaching you things. Revelations. Because everyone here has gotten a new thought about God since you came. I'm certain of it. Everyone here has gotten at least one new thought. You said, well, that makes sense for this, this, or so on, about God. You learn something, see? So when you come here on Sunday, you're in it's, it's a school. Right? This is school, and we're teaching. We're teaching you how to be an overcomer. How to be go from being a servant to a friend, if you want to. Or you can remain a servant and have a minimal amount of duties in heaven. It's up to you. But I want you to get an understanding of what's, what God is, how God is, is working in your life. Everybody here has a ladder to God. God has provided you a ladder. That's a metaphor. Every person here is a ladder. Some of you who are not saying more again are not even concerned about that. You're never going to try the ladder, and that's up to you. So you don't go to heaven. Big deal. That's, that depends on you. And some of you realize that you are in a teaching and learning situation. This is called the University of God. You're learning here. And you can go as high as you want to go. And the more you go, the higher you go, the more responsibility God's going to give you in heaven. The more he's able to trust you to do the right thing at the right time because you understand. And if you don't understand, you can mow the lawn and be real happy about it because everybody's going to get a fullness of joy no matter what you're doing. And I'm just making that as, a, it's like a lowly thing, but I'm just telling you that from God's point of view, that's going to be a good thing too. What do you want? What do you want? I want to go to heaven. I want to serve God. I want to serve God. He, Jesus Christ said, go into all, he's talking to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wait a minute. What do you say? In the Greek, that means go into, into the universe. Doesn't mean this world, aeon. It means cosmos, universe. Jesus Christ said, "Go ye." He's talking to the temple. Go ye into the universe. What do you think out there? You think that these, even the, our, our our government comes in. Even these gov our government has admitted that flying saucers actually do exist. They don't know too much about it. They say they know a lot more than what they're telling us. You know that as well as I do. That's right. But flying saucers exist. The other planets exist. Uh, they come from other other places. They live. Uh, these people, these people in these flying saucers, flying contraptions, live other places. They don't live on the earth. <coughs> so Jesus said, "Go ye out into all the universe, and preach the gospel. That's the gospel of love to every creature, because there are creatures out there, not just people. There are creatures who think." Take, for example, a horse. Now, as far as I can see, a horse is the only real animal that appears often in the Bible or in the book of, book of Revelation. But having had horses, okay, horses think they have a regular mind. They either like you, they don't like you. They like things, they don't like things. Hey, they make choices. Horses think. I think dogs think, too. Cats only think about themselves. <laughs> but dogs think about other people. Dogs are very loving. Oh, they want to love somebody. But that's a nice thing about a dog. You want somebody to love, get yourself a dog. I mean, man, the dogs are not. Cats, you get, I've had cats. It's pretty much, you know, you become the servant to the cat. You take care of the cat the way the cat wants to be taken care of. If he doesn't like it, you know. So you got to be nice to the cat. Whereas a dog, <laughs> I love you, I love you, love you, love you, love you. <laughs> 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 
think it's nice. And the horses, I was around horses, horses weigh 1,000, 1,500 pounds. Some weigh 2,000 pounds. A horse can kick you and kill you just like that. Anytime it wants to, pow, man. I mean, it knock your way through a wall. But they don't do that. But they don't do that. They're, they're good animals, horses. Oh. Jesus Christ said, I want to go to some place. Incidentally, there are horses in heaven. It says, the Bible says so. I want to go some place with their horses. I'm hopefully that I've got a few of my, my pet animals, my, my dogs and some of my, some of my cats. Nah. Uh, with me in heaven, you can, I, don't, I don't know whether I do or don't. But we were all created on the same day, six days, so. Okay, so Jesus Christ said in John 3, 3, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, you got to be born again to get to heaven. Here's the deal. Now, the ladder is for everybody, but you need to start climbing the ladder. But if you don't want to start climbing the ladder, you don't have to start climbing the ladder. That's up to you. So I'm going to offer this, I'm going to say a prayer of salvation. Anybody who would like to say that prayer, Romans 10, 9 says, that If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Saved means born again, it means salvation. So, in other words, I want to start climbing the ladder. I want to know God. So I'm going to ask now, and in the internet congregation as well, is there anybody here who would like to receive Jesus Christ for the first time today? Would you please raise your hand? You've already done that. I'm going to say this prayer for that's probably pretty normal for us. I'm going to say this prayer for those people in the internet congregation. I'm sure many of them have not said this prayer before, okay? And, uh, and we're all, my teaching is, if you go back five years where it starts, you can figure it, it can come to you. We're all angels, fallen angels. I'm going to ask that if you would all stand, please, and say this prayer with me. You can't uh, uh, make, the, uh, how I say, uh, these people have to go through the door, the door of Jesus Christ themselves. But we stand in honor to God and honor to our own salvation that we're going to say this prayer. We're going to act like a chorus of heavenly angels who are saved, who are born again. We're on our way. And we're going to say a prayer for those who are not. Let's say this now, shall we? Father God, I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for all my sins and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Father God, please send your son, your seed, your love into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Please be seated. We're going to take tithes and offerings now. Uh, John, come forth and you come forth. Now, we're going to take tithes and offerings now. And I didn't finish this thing, but if you read it all, what happened to uh, Jacob at the end of his vision about uh, his dream about heaven and the ladder to heaven is he tithed for the first time which is an indication of belief. He tithed for the first time. You need to read the rest of that and you'll see it there. Okay? And that's what we're doing now. We're asking for anyone who would like to tithe. And this is a benefit. Doing a tithe will not get you to heaven, nor doing a tithe will, will, will get you to heaven. The point is, is that, uh, I what, what I'm saying is, you can go to heaven without being a tither. It just, it's just, it's a matter of rewards, that's all. Because God said that those of you who obey me, I will open the windows of heaven above you so that you cannot contain the blessings that will flow down upon you. So God's looking for obedience. 
And only you know who's tithing and who doesn't tithe. Tithe is ten percent of the increase for the week or the month or, or whatever the case might be. And uh, it's a way of. Here's what it is. A tithe is a way of starting as a servant. As a servant. And those who don't, well, that's up to them. Somebody told me we're going to have a really good dinner in a few minutes. <laughs> they lie to me a lot, so I don't know. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Tony, come forth a bit, the other Tony. Okay, stop right there. Bless the food we're about to partake of. You're on interna inter international, this is going to every country in the world right now. I'm just trying to shake up a little bit. <laughs> okay, go ahead. God, thank you for the food we are about to receive and our blessings today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless God. Hallelujah. Let's eat. <laughs>